is like, I don't care if you get down and do 10 push-ups a day, if that's how you start, if that's something you could do every single day, then do it. That is amazing because that's one step further than what you were before. This is my 10th year working out. Um, funny enough, it started through competition of, of all things. And I just got a, like renewed singles. So, you know, getting that revenge body back, uh, getting ready to get on the prowl. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it was funny because a couple of my friends I was hanging out with, they were like, Oh yeah, I've gained like five pounds this month or, or 10 pounds this month or whatever. And he's like, yeah, I've been lifting, look at, check out these gains. And, um, and now, uh, and so then I was like, well, I can do that. I have like a really like low key in the back of my head competition. Like, you know, I want to, I want to do this and I want to just destroy you uh, type of vibe. So that was kind of how it started, at least in the full term. And so I ended up connecting up, I think, and I also I got a discount at a gym through my work. So that just like worked out great. And so connected up with a coworker, started going pretty consistent. Um, you know, it's funny because you talk about how difficult it is to start. I literally just Googled a plan uh, and it ended up coming up. And it's funny because that's like one of my favorite plans that I still use to this day uh, every so often, which is really cool. But anyways, started off, I gained 10 pounds in like two or three months. Um, went on from there, you know, years went by, ended up finding out that the same two guys that ended up you know, kicking me into gear fell off. They stopped going to the gym. They were very inconsistent. Um, but I just kept going. And so I can't really tell like any sort of secret other than just protein eating. And, uh, I, I was pretty lucky cause I was very skinny on top of that. So, you know, everybody's like, Oh, you're skinny. So you don't have anything to worry about. Not tough for you, but it honestly, it was tough. It was pretty tough to, to actually do it from that side and have difficulty gaining weight and getting to look a certain way. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, just to keep the, the story brief, uh, I just kept on going. I've, there's various gaining points. I've always gotten up to never broke 200 pounds. Um, always got up to a certain point. And when I stopped liking how I looked in the mirror, I would start, I would lose weight. I would start cutting again um, and just cut down to a cent to a certain level to where I couldn't lose any more weight, at least, or I was good. And then I'd start bulking again. And I literally did that cycle for 10 years <laughs> at this point. And, and, you know, now I'm at that point where I'm, I'm ready to lose again. <laughs> and so, uh, the dad bod's looking too strong right now. So I gotta, I gotta change that up, but yeah, that's, uh, that's at least the gist of it. <clears throat> We're gonna make you take your shirt off in a little bit so everybody can can see what we're we're talking about. Uh, oh, <laughs> can you can you tell us what you you said you were skinny? You know how much did you weigh when you started all this? Yeah, so I weighed about 145, 150 pounds, um, soaking wet in college. So like 21, 22, 23. Uh, I've always been skinny, skinny ripped skinny ripped is what it's called or you just don't have fat but you so you're just muscles show and <laughs> uh unearned and so yeah so now i've i've started there at this and you're point, about like I'm, six foot right a little bit under six foot like 511 um okay. which inches do make a difference in that sense but um so i ended up getting up to in in Currently, I've gotten up to as as most as 195 pounds, so about a 45 pound difference um, of weight on a on a, the same physique. And usually, when I cut, I cut down to 170. So some pretty big like number changes there, like 40 pound, 45 pound increase down to 20 pounds and then back up it's it's pretty interesting to think about uh in, from a zoomed out perspective um but yeah yeah there was a point in time when chelsea and i were going to the gym almost every day before work she was more consistent than i was and uh i guess even before that i would go to the gym with a buddy and that was that was when i was trying to lift and like learn as much as i possibly could i feel like i failed i i like i was very fit 
Um, I was getting stronger because my my reps and my weights for everything was getting higher, but I don't feel like I ever got the calorie intake figured out. So I wasn't like gaining the muscle that you, you know, you see on these people that that are consistently mm -hmm. going to the gym. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's so interesting because I never really grew up around a gym. Everything that I did was like free body stuff. So if you could do it at your house, mm -hmm. um, you know, stuff you throw on some shoes, go run. Uh, so walking into the gym for the first time was super intimidating for me. And I, I think that that's kind of the story for everybody that, that starts working out. Um, you go in there, you have no idea how to use half these machines. You're, you're like the dummy that's actually reading the instructions on the side. Um, <laughs> and like, you don't have the confidence to go talk to anybody. Uh, but as you get into it, you realize everyone's so freaking nice there. Cause they're just excited that you're out there working out with them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, did you have did you have a similar experience where you had to kind of get the confidence to even be in the gym before you dove into the rest of the stuff? Um, see, I don't know to be honest. I mean, I feel like it was daunting just to be in there for the first time and seeing other people doing it as if they were there for years. When in reality, I feel like everybody, in a sense, has that same level of feel. And so, when that came to be like i said i i just googled a workout program and it was like shortcut to size i think is what it was called and so it i didn't know anything about it um you know i took some weight training classes did some lifting before but i basically just relied on other people and so it never really stuck and so whenever i did this um I, I looked up the, the, I knew everything for the most part. I mean, incline bench, regular bench, uh, you know, some of the fly stuff is pretty self-explanatory, you know, squeezing, squeezing the cheeks there. And so <laughs> <laughs> squeezing the, the chest, excuse me, not the cheeks. Um, <laughs> you may need it though. Um, so I guess maybe the fact that I already had a plan and I just stuck to the plan. I was like, okay, I'm not going to deter from this. I didn't have the mindset to be like, oh, if somebody's on the bench, I don't know what else I can do. You know, it's like, it's either that or I go home. And so it's things like that where maybe I was just like, okay, I'm just tapping my toe behind this bench waiting for it to get done um, for me to do it. And then on top of that, like I said, the air competition was like, okay, I got to do this because I want to kick my friend's ass and, <laughs> and, and, and get these gains and, and do better. But um, it kind of just started that, just kind of motivated me. I started to see some of the basic gains um, just with like, I think my friends also did help me with being skinny. They have things called like mass gainers where it's like a, a lot of calories in one serving. And so it's like you're drinking like 600 calories as an extra meal, basically. And so I did that with some protein, saw the newbie gains, and I was kind of hooked at that point. Like it was just cool to, to see that it didn't take a lot of time. And yeah, it did take effort. But in two months, I gained like 10 pounds. I mean, that's pretty significant on anybody losing or gaining so it's like you kind of like crave that in a way just because you're like oh this was quick and um painful but you know it was worth it like it's cool to see the change yeah i i, I did a similar thing where when i first started going it was kind of just you know i know how to do that or like i'll try this machine out and then you, yeah. you look up a plan and you kind of just make that your your bible for a minute it's like Mm -hmm. This is my tried and true until I learn enough to expand on this or whatever. Um, and for me, it was it was doing the like body pairs. So what uh, back by chest try? Like th yeah. there's a very legs. Like that's a very common one that every everyone goes to. Everyone international um, chest day on Monday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chest <laughs> tries. Yeah, <laughs> the bench is always full on Monday. Always, that's full. funny. I never thought about that because everybody probably does align to the same thing for the you know, like the main focus, the chest. Mm -hmm. um, were you were you doing workouts before or after work? Oh gosh, I think it was after. I was kind of a okay. night owl, um, you know, through college and stuff, or at least the back half of it. Like all of my classes were 
after 1 p.m. So then I'd stay up till 2, 3 a.m. And then I actually did that through my first uh, my first job. Uh, funny enough, I would like walk in at like 10 a.m. But I was going to the gym at 10 p.m. at that time. Okay. That was like three or four years in. So I was definitely afternoon guy, which is ironically the busiest time. But um, yeah, it's I sleep was I always slept. It was <laughs> or shifted the sleep 2 a.m. to 10 10 a.m. I mean. Not the greatest schedule, but yeah. We were we were going in the morning and I always felt like I was better than everyone walking into the office because <laughs> I'd get up at five or six in the morning, go bust the workout out, get my shower in. You know, I'm I'm like I'm all amped up, I'm wide awake. Everyone's walking in with their first cup of coffee. You know, you've you know, already ran shoulder. miles. Yeah. You're already yeah. like pumping out, got the pump, the shirt's feeling tight. You're already coming in with new fresh ideas you figured out on the uh, treadmill <laughs> to yep. enhance your opportunity. Yeah, no, it's it work out high. It's so interesting because I I swear I've been all over the map when it comes to things. Like I, I really do for, now I haven't done any steroids at all. I let me let make that clear. Um I did consider at one point in time, which we can talk about, but um I, I hadn't done any steroids, so it's like I've literally tried everything underneath the sun as far as supplements are concerned, pills like BCAAs, energy drinks, um, proteins, any types of proteins. And so it's so funny how like you start if you're passionate about something, you literally look at everything and you do and try everything, right? And when in reality and then once you're done in that phase, you just are like, oh, none of that shit really helped that much like what was it like a 0.5 percent improvement for like a month <laughs> and um it's so interesting to think about that like when you start and you're passionate you get all that stuff and then now me thinking back to that and being like oh all i all i need is protein now <laughs> and a pre-workout and that's it <laughs> that's all you really need <clears throat> which shows the mindset transformation of like what you learn over time I kind of want to pull that apart a little bit because I that kind of sounds similar to every sport. I mean, people get so obsessed with gear and they they refuse to start something because they don't have their, I don't know, their five thousand dollar bike and their you know two hundred dollar backpack and their fancy shoes and their lights and all that stuff. Like mm -hmm. gear is very fun, but um, it it is cool to hear you say that that a lot of those supplements aren't a big deal. I mean, what, what is your, is it just protein and calorie counts that, that you, you believe is like the main thing you need to worry about right now? For, for me personally. Yeah. Um, when it really comes down to it. So I don't know if anybody who's listening or even you, Tyler have, have come in, you know, they always say your body's built in the kitchen, which is really true. Um, what it really comes down to is, is protein take intake. Um, anything you read, anything that's like talking about trying to build muscle, even when you're losing weight, it's all about maintaining your protein level always stays the same. So if you're gaining weight, the thing that fluctuates is maybe your protein will go up, but it doesn't necessarily ever go lower than a certain threshold. Typically your body weight, that's usually the better thing that you should push towards is like, if you weigh 180 pounds, you should have 180 grams of protein as a guy, which is difficult. It's pretty daunting for typical people, uh, unless you have protein, but you know, whether you're gaining that stays at 180, maybe go to 200 and it's the carbs and fats or whatever else that goes up. Then if you're losing weight, 180 grams of protein, then you start lowering fats and carbs. So then, you know, if you really stick to the protein stuff, like right now, personally, um, I should be tracking my stuff, but in reality, I'm just making sure I'm getting enough protein at every time I eat just, and then just making sure I eat a little bit less. Um, so like going back to what you said, as far as like little things and where to start, it really does come down to starting as a whole, starting with something small that you can do, um, and just sticking to it, you know, the small habits, basically you don't have to go to the gym or I, I listened to, or read atomic habits where they talk about, like, if you're wanting to go to the gym, just put your gym clothes on. That's your first step. Mm -hmm. You know, like, or tie your shoe, uh, put your shoes on, like, you know, try to do something at least every day um, that can get you started. 
but yeah, protein is definitely the way macros. I need to read that. I've heard a lot of good things about that book and I feel that way oh, with, with like projects. It's like, I don't want to go downstairs and, and work on this bath or this uh, bathroom, but yeah. you get down there, you like, shoot one screw and you're like all right well i'm in the zone now how to go um, yeah so true i i really liked how you simplified that um the the protein in like calorie explanation because that's something i never really figured out and i i dabbled with some of the like some of the supplements you know the protein shake the mm -hmm. the b-a-a-c what is that those are like bees like aminos bcs yeah, aminos. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's something else. Um, Probably like pre-workout and stuff. Yeah, and I, I feel like the pre-workout's just uh, a little like kicking the pants to to get moving. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of I kind of want to hear your like uh, I don't know. You you get to the gym, you kind of get a routine down, you're comfortable there. Um, you are in the habit of going. Like, how did you? how did you get into the supplements? Like, did your, did your journey naturally have you figuring out the nutrition side or was that like running in parallel with the supplements? Um, like what, what kind of came first as you're exploring these, this over 10 years? Um, yeah, I think the supplements was always a thing. I knew protein was a thing. I knew I heard it from my friends at the time, like protein's a thing. They were like, Hey, I got this brand of protein. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go ahead and buy it. Um, you know, mass gainer, like I mentioned, is like, it's, it is a, an efficient way to gain weight. It's just really expensive for not a lot of servings. Um, but you know, just things like that. It's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I couldn't even tell you the date and time of which I figured it out. It's just something that like al almost slowly integrated into it over time. Um, you know, it's like, oh, okay. The default thing is go, do exercise have a protein shake afterwards um and then i knew like my fitness pal was like the number one uh like macro you know checker at the time still is basically um so i had that and so i was logging my stuff and it's it's really i think that's what it really comes down to is like check your own stuff and see how you feel look in the mirror you know do those three things and then say okay over a month I've gained 10 pounds. Okay. I'm not gaining as quick. So do I need to change something? Do I still like how I look? Um, am I making if like increases on my lifts? Um, it is a lot of feel with a lot of logging and saying, okay, yeah, I've got my 180 grams in. Um, what do I want to do? Do I want to lose weight? Then maybe I'll lower that depending on the calories, set it, stick to it for a couple weeks, maybe three, four weeks at most. And if you're not seeing changes, change something like, so I think, I think when it comes to like BCAAs and other stuff like that, it was really a matter of curiosity. Like I went to muscleandstrength.com. They always have deals. And so I'm just like scrolling through the deals, like looking for uh, protein. I probably had too much money for the amount of like, <laughs> like for how, my age or something. So I was just spending on it. And so, I was like, oh yeah, I'll try it. it. Tastes good. And so I was just making these like concoctions, right? Before the before with the pre-workout, the BCAAs right in the middle, the intro workout, because that's what I saw on a YouTube video. Um, and just going from that. It's really just like it just got into an interest of like looking up new stuff and just being like, oh, let me try it and see what happens. Uh so yeah, it, you just gotta try it. It's just a curiosity thing, I think, more than anything there's so it's much stuff out there it's, it's like you could spend 500 dollars a month on that stuff if you if you went super down the the supplement rabbit hole yeah um, so i i actually remember there's a brand called first form where you can be like a an affiliate to like sell their stuff so i was like okay that'd be pretty cool but what they require you to do is take their stuff and their stuff is like legit 500 dollars a month and I'm like, I can't afford this. I want to do this, but I literally can't afford <laughs> having their stuff. It's just like way too expensive. So, and then all of it's a money grab at this point. That's why I talk about like, you know, if I could say anything, it's just like, it's all a money grab to say like, 
all of these steroided people are taking these pre-workouts and saying it's working and like you can look like me um you know like huge if you take this pre-workout when in reality we all know that that's not you know or kids may not know but like it's all a money grab which is kind of sad it takes away the joy of the change and the momentum there's it's not everything it's not everything's like that but it's interesting to see and think about yeah that's i, I totally believe it just scrolling those sites it's like you can't even make sense of it until you start watching youtube videos and mm -hmm. even then it's like god damn um I, I like that you brought up my fitness pal because that app is incredible and it's it's like mm -hmm. it allows you to collect that on yourself if you use it right and then mm -hmm. um you know iterate you do see how you feel see what see what's working you can look look back at the data and like change things you know yeah are you getting more weights and more reps are you gaining or losing weight whatever you're trying to do i know i know my wife chelsea she's used that a lot when she was trying to figure out how to diet and it absolutely worked mm -hmm. um what was i oh yeah one thing that i wanted to kind of mention is a lot of these like workouts they always recommend a lot of stretching and i i feel like as guys we're not very good at it and uh i'm finding now that i'm a little bit older like i have a lot of knee pain uh which is a problem for when i run and mm -hmm. I never knew this until I went and saw a physical therapist, but it, it's like drives from my hip flexibility, which I've never had good hip flexibility. So like, I'll make sure to do heavy hip stretches before I go on run, because otherwise my knee will just totally kill. Um, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you discovered anything or what you learned about like flexibility as you kind of progress through this. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of, like plays into the the fitness journey um i would say in the back half of that maybe even I, my knees have been hurting probably since like covid i would say and i'd i'd squat heavy i squat like 400 pounds and stuff and and you know typically only my right knee would hurt uh from time to time but it got to a point to where i think it was just like i either my back or my lower back or my knees just would not let me squat i wouldn't be able to do that at all and so I just completely paused. I, I stopped squatting. Same thing with deadlifts. Deadlifts, I think, caused my lower back pain. Um, so it, to where it almost felt like a uh, like a nerve got like pinched in a way, and it got sore for a week straight. And it was horrible. It happened like three or four times. Enough for me to go to the chiropractor or whatever. But yes, I I did feel that, um, and that's actually what's kind of initiated another journey, fitness journey, you know, into mobility. Um, like you mentioned talking about just like always having hip poor hip mobility. I mean, sitting every day as it stands right here, like as us sitting, doing this, it's like, it's the worst for your hips. It's worst for your knees. And so, yes, long story short, I actually also have a, a flexibility routine that I'm now diligent in doing. Um, and that's probably arguably even harder, uh, because you <laughs> see, Le even less gains uh <laughs> in a longer amount of time but <clears throat> the the knee it's so funny because the knees are symptoms that come from your ankles and your hips or it usually comes from the bottom up so if you have ankle issues it's usually from your knees or your hips if it's from your knees it's usually from your hips or your lower back in some fashion and so it's interesting that you already you also found that out um with trying to like plyometrically warm up your hips and get them loose before you start running it was so bad where i would do leg extensions or leg curls and i knew i had the strength to do it but i would only do uh, like 20 30 pounds because if i if my form went wrong in any way i would just have a shooting pain through my knee and it was unbearable um I haven't been to the gym much since I discovered like the hip portion, mm -hmm. but I I know that I, I know that when I stretch it, I have more luck with running. So I would have to imagine that that would carry into like the extensions and curls and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, that, that's one I definitely need to get better at. I, I should be stretching more often when I'm laying on the ground with the kids, playing with them and stuff. Um, 
yeah it's it's interesting i i also found out that i had weak glute activation so whenever i was squatting i was literally using my hamstrings and my back my butt was not firing and so because my hamstrings were compensating they were connected so it's like mm -hmm. okay i didn't i didn't need them and then i sit constantly so i never used them and so on top of that it's it's so funny like the humbling experience of me getting down and doing like i don't want to say anything's a, like a girly exercise because it's all amazing um and some of those girls in the gym are like crazy but um i like get down on my side and like do some sort of like hip thrust into the air to activate like one glute and then i flip over to the other side and do the same thing and and by the end though my like ass is burning because uh, <laughs> it hurts so bad um <laughs> but then that's what i need that's what i do with my leg workouts now that's the first thing i do is i work out my glutes explicitly um and my ha hamstrings in order to get them to fire for the stuff that actually does work out and involve the knees and the quads so it's you know like like you found out it's almost like we're given symptoms of something and we have to kind of backtrack the symptoms to find the source and actually figure out what can we apply to to make us not hurt that's basically what it comes down to for the most part and actually accomplish what we want yeah it's like it's so hard to even find the right information i if i didn't have a pt friend that mentioned that i would have never known like mm -hmm. it just the body is such a that's a deep rabbit hole and i'm sure i'm sure in this journey you've learned a lot of things about how your body works how the body works and mm -hmm. i mean that's fun I, I think that's a very cool part of this i just want to get big but now i also could be a doctor no <laughs> yeah pretty much the rabbit holes are so so deep and and everybody's saying different things it could be this it could be this it could be this i went to pt and it was hard for him to figure out what it was but he did say it was glute activation because all of my other mobility was decent because i already started with stuff um and so i'm just continuing going and but uh you know what's interesting is like it doesn't necessarily help my lifts in the gym like stretching and mobility is more of helps with my leg days more than anything it really helps with my day to days because I get, got to a point to where I was living with some sort of pain in my body. Like my left shoulder was hurting. My wrist was hurting because I injured it and it wasn't like healing. My hips were hurting. My knees was hurting when I was sitting uh, for too long of a time. And it's like I, you get to a point where you're just tired of it. You don't want to live with that. I'm like, I'm 33 and I'm dealing with something that I expectantly should be dealing with when i'm 63. um so it's like yeah you gotta be <laughs> like i want to be lively now so it's like you got to put in the work you know going back to the journey of it, it's like what you're talking about like getting the shit done in the morning uh you know you put in the work harder than the other people you know because you have to <clears throat> It, it's almost like the mobility thing is is a longevity thing. If you don't mm -hmm. have proper mobility, you're actually hurting yourself by um, doing those workouts wrong. But you said yeah. that you're doing squats and your your hamstrings are activating. Like you're you're kind of just hurting. You're kind of making the problem worse. Um, yeah. And if you don't if you don't solve it, then you know you could be in much more pain at 34. Um, yeah, I had no idea. I, I had no clue. I was squatting three, 365 for four reps with no idea that I had any problems. And it just ended up showing itself one day um, or, you know, over a course of time. I, it was too bad that I couldn't ignore. And so, yeah. you know, that's what it typically takes with most people. It's like, oh, not to say many people are like overweight or whatever, but it's like it's it, – you want to tie, try to take care of yourself before you have to get to the doctor to tell you, um, which, you know, we, <laughs> so many different tangents you can go around and being like, Oh, the fast food is so fat food in general is so bad for you as a whole. Um, 
you know, we can only work with what you can, right? It's like, you got to keep it simple and figure out what you want to do, what, what you can do consistently. That's the biggest thing. It's like, I don't care if you get down and do 10 pushups a day, if that's how you start, if that's something you could do every single day, then do it. That is amazing because that's one step further than what you were before. I like that. Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's uh, let's kind of go into the mental health of all this. You said at the start of this that you had gotten out of a relationship, and I don't know. Maybe this was this was a way to kind of fight whatever demons were cooped up in that. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but I, I kind of want to hear how how like mentally maybe you evolved through this whole journey and and how it's helped you. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would say that was more kind of a joke, I think, more than anything. I actually did go through some serious, like, uh, I got divorced two or three, I guess, two years ago. I was, during the separation, I was at, like, a peak of weight. And I was like, okay, well, I'm mentally, like, in a, just a, a swampy area right now. So I'm like, okay, I don't have, all I can do right now is, like, work on myself because it, I wanted to stay together. It was in the hands of my ex at the time. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to, I don't know. I'm bored. I'm just going to get shredded. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so it's like, okay, I wasn't hanging out with her. We were separated, but still living. I was like, I refused to like move out because I, you know, bought the house or purchase, help purchase the house. So in any case, yeah. So I was getting shredded. I was super motivated in that sense. I think that gave me a lot of like, confidence in myself because i was just going through such a shitty relationship situation that it was like okay at least i can focus on myself and like feel good about myself seeing the progress seeing the gains um putting in the effort like going even beyond and being like okay going to bed at 10 waking up at seven like on a really good sleep routine like doing stuff for the mental as well as the physical and it it combining itself and it really did kind of stabilize me through that time um you know i was kind of in in a hopeful denial phase but it helped me just like it was just like so ingrained in my life at that point it's like that was my place to go as as like the sanctuary um which i think i hear a lot of people do like get a good sweat on and it kind of like scientifically it actually ups your dopamine so if you're in a depressed state physically like your body knows and like starts lifting you up and saying hey that was good for you so mental health i mean i think everybody can say that i don't think anybody regrets doing a workout okay. um, in some manner or pushing themselves in some manner yeah i know that i know that when i'm when Chelsea and I are in a big fight, there's times where I'm just like, I'm going for a run because it, it, it'll be worse it if I stay here. Yeah. She hates it because she knows like it's bad, but like you get out there and you just like, you run at a speed that you hate yourself at. You, you push yourself so hard that you're, you're just like dying from this workout. And then you get that, mm -hmm. that runner's higher, that workout high. And you can just think so clearly, solve the world's world's problems um, mm -hmm. with no distractions. Um, I can't say I really ever got that with lifting, but mm -hmm. you do get like you get some sense of clarity. You just don't get like that that runner's high clarity that I'm talking yeah. about. Um, yeah, and it just seems like it seems like a lot of anxiety is just kind of clear away when you when you get a sweat on, when you get a good workout in. And mm -hmm. I know I, I feel worse off if I have a week where I'm not doing a lot because things are busy at home. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't know if you had any other comments or, or thoughts on how just working out in general has, has helped you mentally. Yeah, it's interesting that you talked about the sweat because there's a lot of times where you can go into the gym and not be mentally there. But you know, and, and for me, it's like, I'm just staring at other people because I have something else in my mind. I feel depressed literally in the gym. I'm doing the lifts, but I'm not pushing myself hard. I don't have a sweat I'm staring at my phone, distracted. And you're always going to have that day. Um, but it is, it is something to be said. Like now I actually, I ride the bike before I lift because I know I'm going to sweat really hard whenever I do that and then start lifting my heart rates already up. Uh, so it kind of already keeps you focused and ready to push. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I it's different for every pe- every person, but I think arguably the mental health, at least for me, is whenever you get to a level to where you are kind of, you feel that push of yourself. Um, that's whenever you feel in tune, that you're feeling the music or something like that's the distraction and the focus is whenever you're like, you're not push like if you are in a position to where you're a little bit further along to where you can't think about what you're distracted by basically that's the benefit of you it's like you're you're mad so you're obviously using that as fuel uh in that example but like even even still other examples it's like if you can at least push yourself hard enough to where you're struggling in a way you won't be distracted by whatever was ailing you before um, at least in the time, and maybe it can give you a bit of clarity. I know that's what's helped me. Um, so it's interesting. Everybody's different. It's so unique for each and every single person. I think in reality, what it really comes down to is is finding that that push, finding the push, finding the motivation for what you can do. Um, you know, for for me now, like before five years ago, it was. I want to try to lift as heavy as I can. And I got to my PRs and I'm happy with them for the most part. And then now it's a matter of like, okay, I just want to maintain good, clean muscle and keep that as a good quality maintenance, not get a dad bod because uh, once this kid comes in a month or less than a month and, um, and I honestly get the same high and a good stretching mobility routine. Uh, when I feel like I'm flexible. So it's like, you know, cause I've set a goal and I feel like I'm getting towards it. So, it's, you know, set the bar somewhere. That's really what it comes down to and try to strive for it. It's, it's almost like if you are trying to grow in anything, if your workout, your mobility, your, who knows, cooking, your creative skills, if you're trying to grow and learn new skills, you can't really, you, you can't really think about other things. You can't be distracted. You have to kind of give it your all and give it total focus. And, mm-hmm. and I think especially as, as guys, like that's a big thing, but pushing yourself gives you that, like, I don't know, space in your head to just kind of problem solve and, and work, work through stuff. At least for me, it does. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know that, I know that at one point you were kind of thinking about getting into, uh, bodybuilding or or you had like an offer to do so uh, maybe mm-hmm. you can kind of tell that story because it sounds like it sounds like you did not go through with that and you you actually led into my my next question what are you trying to do now you're just trying to maintain it um but maybe you can try to talk about how you went from this turning down this next step to just being totally content with where you are with everything yeah no that's actually so it's, Piggybacking on the revenge body from my divorce, um, <laughs> I got down super shredded, super lean. Like I got down to maybe one, I got down to one sixty eight. So I'm at I'm at one ninety like three right now. So that's twenty uh, seven pounds, twenty seven pound or no twenty five pounds. So twenty five pounds less than I am now. Completely like about as shredded as I could possibly be, and so that next six months i was wanting to my goal at the time was like okay i want to just stay as shredded as i can and gain lean muscle I, i've set a goal to gain five pounds of lean muscle in a year which is a really long amount of time but as an advanced list lifter that's what it takes and so by july i gained 10 pounds and did a dexa scan and i was still at the same body fat percentage and what's funny is i ended up finding out that it like i I was sleeping eight hours a day and that's what i swear that's what unlocked it i was all the macros were the same and i was sleeping eight hours a day and that's what jump started my like my gaining that much and it being lean but i was like man really take this further i was like I was reading some stuff about what called the phrase called going pro. I think there's a book called going pro and it talks about how, if you're really passionate about something, take it further, like pursue it further, 
and and see how far you can go like don't be afraid to take it another step and so i was like okay i've been lifting for so long what is my next step i've always been interested in bodybuilding so i feel like that would be the next step and so i ended up reaching out to or got connected to a, a, a coach and signed up for a six-month contract and started working with them and i saw a lot of a lot of good a lot of gains but i it was also really difficult because i was eating i had to eat at we figured out just because of how much how many calories i burn a day i had to eat like four thousand calories a day and it was clean so it wasn't like big max every day it was like 20 ounces of chicken and like you know, like two cups of rice at every meal or something crazy. Um, like it was just stupid amounts of food. And long story short, um, I did want to do that. That was very difficult. I started dating somebody who's now my fiance um, at the time. And she lived uh, out of town from where I live about four hours. So I'd go there and we obviously would date, have fun. Um, and so it just got really hard. And it almost felt like my priorities changed to where I still wanted that, but I wanted the relationship more. Um, and I was just stressed. I realized how stressful it was to try, to, like I wasn't hitting the macros every day and I would, I would like beat myself up, felt like I was letting myself down for not doing it. Um, and then I was obviously put my money where my mouth was. So I was like, okay, I was paying and then I wasn't accomplishing it, not getting what I wanted out of it. So I just kind of like, I felt like a quitter in a way, but I did, I felt a huge sense of relief whenever I was like, okay, this, this isn't my goal anymore. Um, this isn't what I, I want to pursue right now. And maybe I'll pursue it one day. I don't know, but um, that it just kind of fell off. It was something I wanted to try and I'm, I'm glad I did, honestly. I really like that. I, I know that you, in the pre-call, you were saying, you know, grace is a, a big part of your journey. Uh, it sounds like you were kind of beating yourself up about all this, but you kind of learned to accept it with with your life priorities. Um, I mean, what what is your kind of philosophy on that with with the skill and anything? Oh man, you you have to. I mean, with anything, like literally with anything, this applies to everything. Is like. If you don't accomplish something that day, you always have tomorrow. I mean, granted, you know, heaven forbid, like something, Lord willing, you, we have tomorrow. We wake up with another breath. But, you know, I was getting to a point to where I was like, if I didn't do X, Y, Z every day, then I would be like, that was a shitty day. That was a bad day because I didn't do it. But it's like, no, it's still a great day. It's just like I didn't quite hit my goals I wanted to that day. And so what's great is I have tomorrow. Um, that was the same thing with the hip mobility, what you were speaking of, like with my back pain and stuff, it felt like that was a six month occurrence where I just constantly was hurting. And I was beating myself up even more at that, just desperate to find some new solution that would take me to a better place. Um, so grace is important. Otherwise, if you don't give it, then you're not gonna keep trying. Uh, it at least gives you the motivation to just seek out something new and and keep going that's really what it is is we're all trying to keep going keep go yeah that's that's something i'm i'm struggling with i i have my my two kids i'm trying to run do this podcast on the side i'm trying to work on house projects and i'm you know trying to be a good dad a and a good employee and it's it's that's really hard lot. yeah that is I a lot myself, i beat myself up about not progressing the the house projects uh you know, if I get too involved in that, then am I being a good enough dad, which is my biggest priority. So it's, it is challenging, but, um, I don't know, having a good support system, having my wife, having you to kind of bullshit with it's, it is, you do, you, you have to have grace, you gotta like forgive yourself yeah. and take it a day at a time. Yeah. I mean, that's what I've been trying to tell my fiance as well. I mean, she's never been pregnant and never had kids. We're, having a kid in, in three weeks and she's arguably more than was more and currently still is more in the gym than I am. Um, she's 37 weeks going to the gym six days a week doing classes. And so it was really hard for her to, 
just understand that this process is a body change and <laughs> and um you know she's like very tough to accept um but she did accept it and she understands that she's like hey i'll get back there one day and it'll it won't be instant um but i do plan to and so you know grace there is just like insane on top of i have no idea how this routine with this baby is going to be if i even want to go to the gym or do anything at the time maybe i do probably to get away but <laughs> if the lady lets me but um yeah it's insane i i'm um uh, yeah you have to have grace you gotta have you gotta have balance um you gotta know your body too and like feel yourself out um like i remember the other day where i was like okay i need to hit the gym but i just got done with work and i was just so drained i put my clothes on put my shoes on i just sat on the couch and i was like okay i'm gonna do this <laughs> and my fiance was just like are you gonna go i was like i don't know <laughs> you don't have to go like it seems like you're okay with just staying here i was like yeah i'm not going i'm i'm drained i'm i just need to sit here and that's okay right like you know there's always tomorrow there's always another time so i think your I body think it's insane before. yeah that you're your fiance is still working out like I, you've sent me videos of her just kind of getting it with that big old belly it's, it's impressive. oh my gosh it's so funny i'm like i i was watching her today we went this morning and she was doing she does a um there's a youtuber who has does like uh hit workouts she, that's all she does is hit workouts and uh, I looked at her from behind and I was like, she don't even look pregnant from behind. She just looks like she's freaking getting a workout right now. And then she turns to the side and just has, <laughs> and just has this big old belly. <laughs> oh my like, gosh. That's, that's my motivation. <laughs> you're you're going to, you're going to have this kid and you're going to have less free time. And that dad bod's coming for you, man. I'm ready for it. <laughs> no no <laughs> please <laughs> no i mean Somehow. it's it's fine it it'll be fine because priorities change right that's what you gotta accept and then not kick yourself for because the priorities change i don't think i think it'll be that's one thing that's so great about my fiance i think she's she's more than like forgiving and like i mean like hey we got you got some time you know like I got it here. Like, if you want to sneak over, get the gym, go for it. Like, I don't want to take that away from you. Um, so, you know, she'll be super cool with that. But yeah, it's it's fun to think about, like, after the fact. I don't know. Have you, like, you've been running for a while, right? Do you ever, like, just think about, you know, where you are now running wise, like, or like your, your roller coaster of a journey running wise in fitness and being like, Oh, you ran a lot in high school, maybe not in college or whatever. And then you wanted to pick it back up. It's just always like been there, right. For you to fall back on. Like, have you ever thought about that over the course of the years? I would say I've thought a lot about it this year. Uh, I mean, I ran in, high school i did cross country and track and i liked that um it, i've always ran to kind of maintain my shape uh I, I like lifting but it's easier for me to just like throw on shoes walk out the door and just like turn my brain off mm -hmm. um but now that this year i trained for a marathon and that was that was a freaking journey that was so cool that was so challenging um i did it and then th because of where i am and where i am at in life right now there was so many like tack on benefits to that it was like you know me time it was you know a long time with my thoughts alone to kind of solve the world problems um it was kind of like a, a huge body reset and that's kind of how, how i think about it now i think i'll be doing a marathon at least once every summer because the training process was so intense and it just like reset me to a state like uh you put in all this effort over three four months you ran your marathon like you're in good shape right now and if i can do that every summer that's that's like you know a checkbox a reset i could work i could not work out for the rest of the year and if i can get to run a marathon every summer i think that's very impressive yeah. um 
I'd say so. And, it, and it's like now, now I'm kind of like battling the ideas as, as I talk to different people on this podcast. Like, ooh, do I want to do an ultra marathon? Do I want to get that insane with it? Um, I don't know if I'm there yet, but there are some there's some like interesting run events that I think would be fun, like uh, backyard marathon where you run four to five miles every hour and just see how long you can stay up for. Like that sounds kind of cool. And you stop when you want to stop. Um, but I will say this, like, I don't know how it is with working out. I know if you don't maintain it, like you kind of set yourself back. I, I finished that marathon and I stopped running for like a month. And then I was just having a, a day or it was nice outside. I was like, all right, I'm going to go run for two hours. Like, no problem. Marathon took me four hours. I'll run for two hours. Should be easy. And I walked. There was parts when I walked and uh, I was like, wow, that like degraded so fast. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's nuts. So bad. Yeah, I it is. It is similar. Your body remembers. So, you know, if you picked it back up, it would pick up a lot quicker than you did before. Um, but it is something that you do need to maintain. It is easier, arguably, you could probably go from a lifting standpoint, you could probably go in the gym twice a week, just lifting some sort of moderate weight and maintain your muscle. Uh, assuming you're eating right, like taking in your protein, you could probably, you could minimize it down to that. Um, you know, at this point in time, like you mentioned, it's really a mental thing for me. Like I feel good when I get an entire weekend mm -hmm. and do something, uh, and lifting heavy, getting a little sore. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it, I love that. I love that goal of setting. That's a hard goal that not many people do just one marathon, let alone one a year. Uh, <laughs> that's really cool. I like hearing that. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be a, a hard thing to pull the trigger on next year, but I've hyped myself up about it so much that I, I kind of can't not do it now. And I love the thought of that reset. It's just it's yeah. really cool to me. I think you should. I think you definitely should. Um, yeah, so I don't know if we want to, like, I, I kind of want to just take take a second and at least if I was going to suggest anything, like, to try to minimize if you're trying to get lifting at least try to like have some sort of minimal suggestion um when it comes to like just tips and tricks of what i found to be most effective in in getting into the gym if you want to go that route yeah i mean i think that'd be a good summary i was going to see if there was any any other like uh anything we didn't pull apart we we talked about nutrition calories flexibility um mental health um gains like i, I feel like we covered a lot and and mm -hmm. yeah i think it'd be great if we just kind of summarize with some some tips and tricks to get people to you know get off the couch and walk in a gym or pick up their weights they have collecting dust in the corner yeah it's well talking about weights dust in the corner i think a biggest thing is to figure out what actually motivates you to work out for me i cannot work out at home i cannot i i do not um i will only do it if i have a time crunch in some manner um otherwise i have to go somewhere that's just that's just what i found for me so i think everybody does need to figure out that maybe it's more motiv motivating because you got in the car and drove somewhere at least you went somewhere at least you entered your the sanctum even if you did one exercise you know that's something or it was on the treadmill mm -hmm. for five minutes so um so that's one thing i would say as far as minimal things probably the most effective things that i've seen make progress for me is sleep figure out what makes you feel alive what amount of hours of sleep makes you feel really good in the morning because your body needs to recover just flat out uh, with quality bedtime sleep not like just resting on the couch or whatever although you, there is time for that sleep is probably that's that's where i saw the most gains after six years of lifting 
I I tightened my sleep up and I saw like newbie gains basically. Um, so that's number one. And number two is all the supplements. I've tried them all. Protein. Just stick to protein. Just um, protein and creatine. Creatine is a natural supplement that will actually arguably give you maybe like a pretty big boost. And it's natural. Your body makes it naturally. It doesn't, you can, you don't ever have to cycle off of it. It doesn't mess with you like steroids in any way. Um, so protein and creatine and arguably try to get at least 150 grams of protein. Uh, depends on your body weight. I guess for ladies, 100 grams, maybe 120. But every guy, if you're starting to, should be in the 150 or above range. But typically a one-to-one -one of your body weight. Um, for bigger people, probably pretty hard. So you can lower it in that sense. But keep the supplements to a minimal. Creatine, pre-workout, and, and protein you know, and that's it. Like you really don't have to waste a lot of money. I get like buy one, get one deals every month <laughs> or go to Costco or something like you can make it cheap. Um, so that's to sleep, very minimal supplements, and then have a routine going to the gym. Don't go to the gym thinking you'll just make something up because you'll dick around and then go home. Um, I've literally only made up my own routines twice in 10 years. I always Google something and have a basis and then adjust it and adjust, manipulate it in some manner. So that's what I've done. That's what I'm doing right now. I've, I've taken something, I've adjusted it and manipulated something that I, I've enjoyed in the past and doing now. So those are probably the three biggest things um, that to at least initiate some sort of continuous routine and and that you'll you'll see some progress from i think but yeah, in reality routine is yeah. so hard to routine is so hard to get going with anything and if you can get, get that down then that's that's mm -hmm. great which is exactly what i was about to say what it really really comes down to that's when you're motivated and going through but it really truly does come down to what can you do every single day that you will not skip what is the what is something to get your body moving maybe it's a walk outside maybe it's uh 10 push-ups after a meeting every meeting or even 10 push-ups when you wake up maybe it's um i don't know uh, cr i wouldn't say crunches maybe you shouldn't do crunches as a start but maybe it's just doing curls while you're playing a video game or watching tv or something i don't know but it needs to be something that you can make confident in doing every single day five, like three four five days a week start with two bump to three like if you're finding that you're doing it and you're maintaining it challenge yourself push yourself a little bit further but i think like you said what gets everybody is setting the bar a little bit too high and it it'll feel real daunting whenever that motivation leaves you which it will leave you uh and that's where willpower and discipline comes in yeah, and I, I think uh, based on our conversation, you know, once you get those three things established, getting an app like MyFitnessPal and starting to like document what you're doing yeah. and what you're eating, like mm -hmm. just having that documented, you'll start to unlock a lot of rabbit holes that you can dive down based on whatever yeah. you're interested in at the time. Um, yeah, th this was good, man. I, I really enjoyed talking about this. I learned a lot of stuff that... that I kind of missed the mark on when when I was going to the gym. Um, man, Chelsea's been working out. We just bought this weight rack set that goes from like fives up to fifties, and Ooh. I really need to start using it um, <laughs> now that I'm not doing marathon training anymore. Yeah, user, uh, she's very motivated. I've seen her progress. She's killing it. So oh, yeah. hop on that train. Uh, I mean, that's what's helpful, right? Like you be like. Hey babe, you going to the gym? You're like, yeah, okay, I'll get up. You know, like <laughs> I, know, I know it's definitely harder with two kids, but um, you know, seeing progress kind of inspires progress. I I feel like in a way. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, I hope you can take advantage of that. Um, and yeah, I'm always here if you need some help with anything.
Oh, I'm probably gonna take you up on that. Uh, <laughs> any any like any last things you want to get across or any shout outs or send offs? Um, no, I, I, I think I'm good. I said, said my piece, really appreciate you bringing me on. And hopefully if even one person hears this and gets something out of it, I think is a, de that's a definitely a win in my book. So, um, yeah, this was super fun. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Type 2 Fun Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a follow and feel free to reach out to say hello, give feedback, or share your Type 2 Fun story.